Deep in the expanses of the Canadian Northwoods, where I live, one can find a vast array of biodiversity. So many species, and so widely varied, that nobody, even if they spent all their time in books memorizing, could possibly recall all their names, both common and scientific, much less the characteristics of those species. And that is why we have field guides, books which are effectively catalogs of every known species of plant, animal, fungus, or other type of organism living within a given region. And as technology has marched on, those books have migrated to electronic form. For myself, where only a few years ago I might have taken a small library of field guides with me any time I went into the bush, occupying a significant percentage of the space of a backpack and weighing me down by at least half a dozen pounds, if not more. I myself have migrated to the electronic format, and these days make it a point only to buy those field guides that are available as a Kindle book. Thus, when I head into the bush, I can take an entire library of field guides that weighs no more than the small iPad that I now always carry as a portable natural science laboratory, as it's also capable of such useful feats as forward-looking infrared, magnetic field measurement, magnification, and even limited microscopy, serving as a star chart and precise map, and any number of other useful services. Thus, thanks to this modern technology, where once I needed a backpack for every outing, now I can simply slip the little iPad into a pocket of my photography vest and get about much less encumbered. But these electronic devices have also enabled the development of some new and interesting technology, especially for naturalists, interested in botany and mycology, and also for foragers. I'm referring, of course, to the applications that are used to identify plants and fungi. There are quite a few of them out there now, and some of them claim to be strikingly accurate, as much as 99% using artificial intelligence. Because of this, many amateur naturalists and new foragers have come to rely upon these applications for making their identifications. And this is a dangerous game. Over the next couple episodes, we're going to take a look at a couple different identification applications. Today, we're going to take a look at one that I'm actually quite fond of, an application that was put together for scientific advancement and educational enrichment, which is a free service that naturalists and foragers can take advantage of, share with one another, and the scientific community, an application in which everybody benefits. I'm talking about iNaturalist. I like iNaturalist, and it has some very good safety protocols to help ensure one makes a good identification. But in my foraging classes, I have often and always warned my students not to rely upon the artificial intelligence of any identification app. And as much as I like iNaturalist, it is no different. Let's take a walk through the woods and examine a few dozen plants and fungi and see how well iNaturalist does at correctly identifying them. I've chosen plants and fungi that are familiar and which I consider simple and basic to teach to new foraging students. And after we examine the artificial intelligence's performance, we'll take a look at some of the features that iNaturalist uses to help correct misidentifications. But we'll also take a moment to discuss why a forager might not even want to rely upon those. For each plant or fungus that I examined, I took three photos of either the whole organism and two of its major identifying features, or if there was no way to get a good photo of the entire plant and differentiate it from the background environment, then I took three photos of its major identifying features. To save time, I won't show all three photos, just one photo of each organism, plants or fungi, and one photo of iNaturalist identification. If iNaturalist at any time gets the answer correctly, that will be the image that I will show of its identification. If the artificial intelligence of the iNaturalist app never gets an identification correct, that will be the image that I show in the end. So let's begin. By and large, I decided to stick with common plants and fungi that can typically be found throughout eastern Canada or the northeastern United States, roughly from Ontario to the Maritime Provinces, and from middle to upper New England. Every place one goes will have its own predilections for species. Some things will be more common, some things less common. I'm sticking with species that are fairly common in my area. I live in a wild region of Nova Scotia, where it's not uncommon to find a variety of edible plants, some very unusual and interesting plants, and a host of fungi that range from the mundane edible to the outright exotic. At first, iNaturalist's artificial intelligence seemed to be doing its job very well, but it wasn't too long before we began to encounter problems. While it was very good at identifying plants and fungi, 
Most of the time, it only managed to identify down to genus, and often enough, not even that far along the classification scale. For a naturalist merely observing and learning about the natural world around him or her, this is not a big deal and perhaps provides a starting place to refine an identification later on. For a forager, however, it's another matter entirely. In foraging, it is often necessary to identify something correctly and down to species. There are exceptions. For example, I rarely ever bother to identify Boletaceae fungi down to species. It's easy enough to tell which are edible and which are not with some simple tests that can be done in moments in the field. By using such tests and overlooking species identification, I save a great deal of time and can harvest Boletaceae fungi faster. Though it is true, I might end up overlooking a few edibles, but I can be sure at least that I'm not putting any toxic Boletaceae into my foraging basket. But by and large, foragers need to know their identification down to the species. Because of this, I created a five-point scale to grade the application's performance. An on-target identification meant that the artificial intelligence of iNaturalist identification app was not incorrect, though that does not mean that the application succeeded in identifying all the way down to species. An on-target identification means that the application's artificial intelligence successfully identified the organism down to somewhere on the taxonomical scale. Successful identification of species means that the application's artificial intelligence was able to correctly identify the organism down to species. Photographic conditions were good, and so misidentifications cannot be blamed on photographic failure. Light was excellent and lenses were clean. So with all the tests run, let's consider the results. There were 30 valid tests. I considered one test invalid because upon taking a closer look at the subject, I determined that the artificial intelligence could not determine whether I wanted it to try to identify the lichen or the tree. Of the 30 tests, 27 were on target, which would seem fairly impressive. It means that the application is about 90% correct. But when we look deeper, we begin to see problems in trusting the application's artificial intelligence because it only managed 14 successful species identifications. Thus, there were 16 failures to identify down to species, crucial for foragers, and an important point for students of natural history to bear in mind, because it means they cannot rely on applications like iNaturalist to make identifications for them. They must go back and confirm those identifications for themselves. Happily, the application made very few errors, 3 out of 30. But we have to be straight up here. For a forager, 3 out of 30 errors is not acceptable. A forager would not want 1 in 10 things that he or she might harvest to possess some degree of toxicity. And one of the failures to identify down to species, as well as one of the errors, were extremely concerning. While the iNaturalist app did successfully identify the destroying angel I photographed, as in Amanita, it did not identify it down to species, no matter how many photos I took. The destroying angel is one of the most lethal organisms on the planet, and if accidentally consumed, there is no certain treatment. Even if one got to a doctor right away, there is a high probability of death. To me, that is not an acceptable level of error. Now, I never harvest Amanitas. There are some edible Amanita species, but there is an old saying among mushroom foragers. There are old mushroomers, and there are bold mushroomers, but there are no old, bold mushroomers. And with Amanita, specific species identification is tricky, and the stakes are very high, ranging from a lifetime of physical impairment to death. So personally, I don't think Amanitas are worth messing with. But some foragers will try to brave the Amanita genus. And if they are going to do so, it is not acceptable to rely on an identification application, not even a good one like iNaturalist. The other major error which the application made was also with another Amanita, which it mistook for an agaricus mushroom. It did not identify it down to species, but no matter how many photos I took of that fungus, it only interpreted it as an agaricus mushroom. The agaricaceae are a friendly family of basidiomycete mushrooms which have many edible varieties, indeed choice varieties, and the poisonous ones among them typically will only sicken a person. You'll regret eating them, you'll learn to be wiser in your selections, but they aren't high risk, and many new mushroom foragers avidly look for agaricus fungi. Thus, it is of great concern to me that the application misidentified an amanita, a fungal species with so many absolutely deadly members for an agaricus mushroom. We've reached the end of this test, and soon I'll take a look at another well-known and respected identification application, widely thought of as one of the better ones. But I believe that the message here is clear. Never, never rely on the artificial intelligence of an identification application. 
Now I said that iNaturalist is one of the better apps, and it has some protocols to help mitigate the risk of its artificial intelligence failing in an identification. With the iNaturalist app, the initial identification made through its artificial intelligence is only the first step. Users of the application can upload their photos to an online database, which can be used by other amateur scientists as well as professional scientists. This database is shared, and other users can examine one's photos and confirm or reject an identification. This helps to confirm and make safer the process of identification. However, there is a caveat. <laughs> There's always a caveat, isn't there? It means the user must rely on the identification skills of whoever is confirming that identification. Another process I find myself leery of. I've taken part in many online foraging and identification groups over the years. And sometimes you will find skilled persons who know what they're doing. Sometimes you'll find persons who are just randomly guessing. And all too often you'll encounter the wannabe expert syndrome. That person who wants to be seen as an expert so bad that they offer an authoritative sounding identification, which might be entirely wrong, and which in any case offers no particular reason the user should rely upon it. I'm just saying, a herd mentality does not necessarily work for identification. A group confirmed identification helps, but it's only as good as the group members who offer it. If you are a naturalist with an interest in identification of fungi or plants, or new to the world of foraging, develop fundamental skills by studying botany and mycology. Learn how to use field guides and identification trees, and only later start experimenting with identification apps, not as alternatives to doing identification for yourself, but more as a tool to provide clues and hints. I've occasionally used them to provide clues and hints to plants and fungi in the area that are entirely new to me. And I find that used like that, they can be very helpful, saving a lot of time with the initial identification. But ultimately, be wary of apps. Never see them as authoritative. Foragers have died from being overconfident in these applications. They can be helpful. They are not authoritative. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist program is committed to the reliable coverage of natural science and environmental issues. If you like our program, please take a moment to subscribe and like.